Uh, hey everybody out there, happy Monday. Uh, I'm testing something brand new out that uh, came to me just last night around 2.15 a.m. when I uh, was uh, feeding my son Noah. He's about three and a half months old, so he's woken up and I'm feeding him there with a bottle and thinking to myself, like, what are the things that I can be doing to um, ignite and inspire other people around me and in my community? How can the people that I already know in my personal professional network help other people? And how can I use my creativity, connections, ability, and understanding for these platforms to bring something to life that will hopefully, again, bring some value to people during a much uh, crazy and unprecedented time right now. And so here is what I, I came up with last night when I was feeding Noah at 2.15 a.m. So it's called Skill Building Live with Kevin. And this is not gonna be all about me, although this first episode is gonna be about storytelling, but this is what I have in mind. So uh, this could be two to three times a week, this might be once a week, this might unfold to be almost every day, but I wanna use this platform, uh, specifically Instagram Live, because the really cool thing is I can actually invite somebody into Instagram Live here, and we can have kind of like a one-on-one -on -one conversation, but really I can get a chance to interview them. And what I want to interview them on is a very unique skill that I have identified that they have. And so I made this this list of about 20 different people in my personal and professional network that I want to bring into this series that I'm going to um, reach out to probably in the next 24 to 48 hours and invite them to to join me on an Instagram live for no more than 20 to maybe 30 minutes, but definitely no longer than 30 minutes to talk about their unique skill. And specifically, how did they learn that skill? Um, three very tactical and very tangible um, tips that they have if you are trying to break into this skill or how do they do what they do. And um, lastly, I wanna talk about what are one to three resources that they have for somebody watching this that wants to get started. Um, this could be a podcast to check out, a video to watch, a course to take, a person to follow, a book to read, you get the gist. So I wanna keep this super short, super uh, practical, very tactical in that we're not just uh, sharing kind of this, this high level um, inspirational jargon. And then lastly, resources that they could actually, somebody else could watch this uh, and, and get a hold of and be like, ooh, maybe I wanna learn this skill as well and add this to my repertoire. Again, uh, the people I've listed here some are close friends, some are family, some are colleagues, some are colleagues that I have a tight connection to, others that I may not see or, or often connect with. But they're all people that I think have a very unique skill both in their personal and professional life. So this isn't just for professional learning or something that you maybe put on your resume, but something that maybe pass the time and come out of this with a new love for something um, that you never thought of. So here's where I wanna get into. Um, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Kevin O'Connell and I am an entrepreneur a digital storyteller and an educator. About 80% of my world is running a digital storytelling, digital storytelling agency here out of Washington DC metro area called FYN Creative. And specifically the two things that we do is the one arm is the training and consulting side where we actually go in and teach organizations storytelling strategy, social media strategy, etc. cetera. Uh, and the other side is content creation, so creating videos. Um, but that's not why I'm here today. Um, the, the skill that I want to share and give you kind of a, a, a brief introduction to is how do we become better digital storytellers? And often when I teach my storytelling classes, I like to strip the word digital right, right out of it and do a level set. And to, to really think about like what is storytelling at its basic principles? And I, I often find it, it's broken down into three simple things, right? There is a beginning. And in that beginning, there's some type of introduction. And in that introduction, you are should be uh, identifying a hero. And what I tell people is that hero could be you, that hero could be your organization, that hero could be your volunteers, your members, that, that, that hero could be a family member. Um, it could be indirect or direct, but you wanna try to bring to light, again, whether you have 30 seconds, uh, in a podcast or a video, or you're writing a, a blog post, whatever, 
That introduction should identify some type of hero and what journey they're about to go on. The second thing uh, that comes next is obviously the middle or, or the climax of a story. And in the middle, that is sometimes messy. Uh, there's uh, often a transformation that takes place or an obstacle that the hero, again, that's up to you who the hero is, uh, faces. And again, that's where you want to really keep the, the user or the viewer or the reader's attention. Um, after the, the middle, uh, there is the ending, right? Every good story has an ending. And in that ending is the, the change or transformation. And what I often find, especially in the world of social media and digital storytelling, is that people generally do a good job at the beginning, do a great intro, they hook you. Uh, they generally do a good job with sharing some type of middle or, or climax or something to keep you appealed, but then they close the loop of the story, right? Uh, and there's no ending. And I specifically see that, especially on Instagram stories. I see that in videos and campaigns a lot, whether it's one piece of content or a bunch. Um, there's no ending. We don't know how it ended. Did you fundraise money? Did you um, get people to an event? Did you, you know, what was the outcome that you were trying to achieve? Again, I'm kind of talking in a business sense, but um, there needs to be an ending. And so I really want you to think about that in, in three acts, beginning, middle, and ending. Uh, another great way to think about storytelling, if any of you out there are journalism majors, um, you'll know, or you could Google search this, the reverse journalism pyramid. And at the top, what it says is this is your most newsworthy info. Uh, this is your headline readers. My mom, God bless her, uh, my mom, Mary, uh, she is a headline reader. And anytime you go to have a further conversation or dialogue about a topic, she's like, well, I just read the headline. But think about it, what's in a headline of any news article or newspaper? It's the who, what, where, when, why, how, et cetera, right? That's what grabs your attention. Um, the second part uh, of the reverse journalism, uh, the reverse pyramid in journalism is the important details. This, again, I'm, I'm gonna stick to traditional written form. Um, this is the first one to two or three paragraphs that explain who the key characters are, what's going on, uh, what you need to know from a high level. And then as you continue to read on, um, this is your other general background info, supporting um, characters, supporting stories, supporting stats, whatever it might be. And what I wanna do is kind of flip that on its head and why I bring in the uh, reverse pyramid of journalism into storytelling, specifically digital storytelling, is it goes in the same principle of having an intro middle and an ending. Uh, I'm getting slammed with like group texts right now that are just completely bombarding me. I'm going to I'm back, at, back at it. Um, so we talk about the reverse, journal, uh, the reverse pyramid in journalism uh, in written sense, but let's think about it in a podcast, right? The podcast title and the subject matter is your, is your most newsworthy info or a YouTube video, right? Or, or some type of video. That custom thumbnail, that description, that is gonna, what is gonna draw people into your um, podcast or video. Uh, the second thing is the first two, three, four to 10 seconds of that video, that is also your most newsworthy info. Then uh, as people continue to listen, watch, or read, that is your other important details and that's what keep people interested. And then lastly is your other general background info when people decide to, to give you their full attention of 20, 30, 40 minutes of, again, a podcast, a video, an article, whatever it might be. But the way I, I, I describe this in storytelling and marketing terms is those people that decide to listen to the end of a podcast, watch the end of a three-minute video, a five-minute video, a 12-minute video, whatever it might be, those are the people that, in my opinion, are most engaged with your audience. They want to be more involved. They want to hear from you more. They may want to participate in what you have going on, sign up for an event you have, uh, volunteer, donate, whatever it might be. And so you really want to think in storytelling in those, in those two terms. Um, I'm probably going to do another session down the road as this skill building live um, venture unfolds uh, on a little bit more of this. But let me get into the back end of, of why I'm starting this. So I gave kind of, you know, a couple, two or three practical tips uh, to start out with just thinking of storytelling in general. Um, but here are three resources that I would highly, highly recommend that you start out if, if you want to explore this storytelling. Again, this could be you want to be a better storyteller in person. This could be uh, that you want to be a better storyteller um, virtually, a better storyteller 
through video, through podcasting, through written word, whatever it might be, right? Uh, and so the thing that I want to start to close this out with is that if we think about two, three, four, five hundred 500 years ago, the beginning of time, we told stories in person. Now we're doing it virtually over the last few weeks, right? And we may be doing it for the un, uh, uh, foreseeable future right now, unfortunately. Um, the second thing is we would tell stories through the 1930s, 40s, and 50s by listening to the radio, right? We, our, our grandparents would sit there and listen to presidential addresses, and baseball games, and just you had to paint this, this visual story through, through, through words, right? And now that has come back to life with what I've already mentioned today is podcasting. Uh, the third way of traditional storytelling is what most of us and most of my friends watching this, uh, being 90s and 80s kids, is TV, right? So traditional 25 to 30 minute television shows. That has quickly been flipped on its head uh, as well. And we're now watching OTT type TV. So um, Hulu, Netflix, Amazon, YouTube, etc. And And those type of stories, the one thing that they have are those are episodic. They show up repetitively. They have a, uh, a very strong hook or cliffhanger at the end, which is what makes us want to stay up till 12, 1, 2 in the morning to continue watching another episode. And so as you're storytelling, you want to think about how do you create content that has a hook, has a strong um, cliffhanger that gets people to come back. And oftentimes I find organizations and people that are trying to do digital storytelling, they try to cram all this information into one piece of content or one story and all of a sudden um, they put out one piece of vanilla con vanilla content that doesn't have that cliffhanger isn't compelling they're not being able to show up consistently and put out one podcast a week or one video per month whatever it might be so three resources that i want to give to you and, and send your way um, uh, where you should check out um, so the first one is this gentleman i've been following since i probably became an entrepreneur his name is donald miller I believe he's based in Tennessee. Uh, he runs a company called StoryBrand. This is great, especially if you are looking to redo your website or, uh, or any just story copy, anything like that. Um, he runs workshops. He has a great podcast with great guests, and he has a great book called StoryBrand. So Donald Miller, StoryBrand would be the first person I would check out. Um, second person, I just subscribed to this. Um, I, I kind of got connected to this person through following Seth Godin, but that's not who I'm going to mention here. The second storytelling resource would be Bernadette, uh, I have it written down here, Bernadette Jiwa. Um, so she has a great newsletter. Uh, I think she has some virtual workshops, but it's called The uh, the Story of Telling. And she sends out a newsletter about once or twice a month, and again, has some virtual um, workshops on becoming better storytellers. She's a great person that I've been following over the last two to three months that I think has some really valid resources and some great free guides even on her website. And the last person I would be remiss to not share is somebody that my wife Courtney and I have been following for years, especially in the public speaking and slide design space that, that we do a lot of work in is Nancy, Nancy Duarte. Um, this is one of her books. I believe she has a book called Ignite, um, but this one is called Resonate. Uh, present visual stories that transform audiences. Now, you may not be looking to be a public, become a public speaker. You may not be looking to um, create visual slides or presentations, but this book or any resource from Nancy Duarte and her company, to be honest, you can translate into any type of storytelling that you need to do here. Um, so those would be three re resources. Donald Miller of StoryBrand, uh, Bernadette, uh, Jiwa of the story of telling and Nancy Duarte, Duarte uh, her specifically her book resonate. So that is my 15 minute skill building uh, live with Kevin uh, first episode here. Again, I dreamed this up less than 14 hours ago and I've already made a list of people I'm going to be reaching out to. But here's what I want to throw your way is if you're watching this, whether you're watching it now live if you're watching it um, later on tonight, or if I somehow cut this up and share it on my other niche movement account or LinkedIn, whatever it might be, if you have a specific skill, something that you can uh, eloquently talk about and provide very tactical uh, tips and a handful of resources, and you wanna join on my Instagram live here over the next several weeks, 
please message me, email me, do what you need to do to get reach out to me. But again, I have about 15 to 20 people that I want to reach out to to talk about all things from the creative space, so graphic design, video, video editing, all that stuff. That's the stuff I do. Uh, but all the way to baking, to being a better sales force or CRM uh, person, to um, making a career change, resume building, um, let's see, uh, become a better runner. Or uh, I, have a, I have a friend here, Mandy, that I want to reach out to that um, is also training for a triathlon and maybe her and I can talk about um, becoming a triathlete. So um, st traditional leadership topics, maybe wine drinking, whatever it might be. But this isn't just in the professional box of skill building. I, I want to really um, find niche people with niche skills to interview them. Uh, God, I'm getting pelted here with group text that I got to put on Do Not Disturb. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, thank you all that for kind of clicked on this. I know a lot more people are experimenting with Instagram Live. I know it can be a little bit weird if you tune in. But um, Danya, hello, hello, uh, Matt Debris. It looks like you ch chimed in. Thank you so much. My cousin's son or cousin's daughter Harley joined here. But thank you guys all so much for checking this out. And I'm sure there's gonna be several of you that click on this later tonight. Please, uh, this will be something that I'm gonna do often. So please um, feel free to tune in and share this with your community. Thanks so much.